All right, guys, how's it going? So, uh, I've been having multiple requests to do a video on animal anatomy. Um, and so I'm going to do just a basic generalized overview of some of the main elements that you want to focus on and learn when you're trying to draw, cr draw creatures or animals, okay? So, um, we've all probably been in a situation or had a time where we were a beginner artist and we were trying to draw a horse and it turned out something like this. Or... We were trying to draw a lion or some sort of carnivore and it turned out something like this. And the problem is that we know that their joints aren't quite the same as ours, right? But, you know, it just ends up being this weird jumbled mess of joints bending the wrong way and things just coming out really weird at the end and not really making a whole lot of anatomical sense. And the reason why is because we've grown up around humans, well, hopefully most of us, some of us might have been raised in the forest, I don't know, but most of us probably grew up around humans and we're able to examine our own body and see other people's and how they work, and we're pretty aware of where our joints are and how our arms and legs bend and things like that, but for a lot of us, maybe not so much around animals, and on top of that, human skin folds pretty tightly against their body, and they don't have a lot of fur covering everywhere, but with other animals, there is a lot of fur oftentimes that covers up a lot of the anatomy that makes it more difficult to see and can even disguise and hide certain joints that you might not be aware of. And on top of that, other animals might have excess fat or different flaps of skin that even further mask the underlying anatomy. So we're going to go through from the ground up and get an idea of how this anatomy is working and then how you can simplify it so that you only have to focus on the main parts you need to know instead of having to memorize an entire skeleton for one animal. So right off the bat um here's what we have to start with we have this skeleton of a horse now this is going to seem really overwhelming at first because this is a lot of information to take in its entire horse right um but you don't need to memorize all this you only need to memorize the main overarching shapes now i should mention that this um and some of the other images i'm going to use and i'll make sure i mention which ones are from a book called animal anatomy for artists the elements of form by elliot goldfinger which i strongly recommend you can get on amazon and it's a really great book for learning how to understand animal anatomy so um first off what we need to break it down to is the major basic shapes from we're just going to stick with a 2d perspective for now and not even do anything fancy so we have this image here and once again this is from that same book i mentioned by elliot goldfinger this is really what you need to understand broken down so i'm going to uh mark on it here so we can see what i'm talking about and these are the main parts we have the head right whatever this shape is going to be for our creature we have the head the neck, the torso, or the chest, they call it the chest volume here, the pelvic volume, which is oftentimes going to be a rectangular shape, and then the neck, which continues through the spine, we have the lumbar region, which is a spine that connects the chest and the hips, and then the tail, not all animals have tails, but most of them do, and then uh, we have our legs, right, so the front leg, this is where people get confused a lot, right, the legs of an animal, a lot of times we see this, and this, and people think that's how it goes because they're not really sure where the joints are, but that's not quite accurate, okay? So this right here, this is a shoulder blade, okay? So if you feel on your own back, that's where your shoulder blade is. Then this is the upper arm, so this would be from your shoulder joint to your elbow represented on an animal. Now obviously, a lot of this is covered up with flesh and we'll get into that and show you what that looks like, but just making some comparisons so you understand. So you have from your shoulder joint to your elbow, and then this would be your forearm from here to your wrist is what this segment would be okay then this would essentially be like the equivalent of your hand bones okay um so from like your knuckles to your wrist would be this long bone here the equivalent and then these would be like your fingers but on an animal they're their toes essentially since most of them don't have hands okay for the back, it's also similar anatomy to humans. It's just different proportions, so it seems off, and it's also often covered by skin. So um, this is our hip joint right up here, and then from their hip to this point is the knee, okay? And then from here to here would be to the ankle, and then this point would be like our heel. This part right here is from our ankle to the ball of our foot, essentially. 
Okay, so for an animal, that's upright in the air, but for humans, that's the part we walk on. Okay, and then this last part would be the toes. Make sense? Um, let's go ahead and take this up another level to what that looks like if we break it into form. So the I think that learning the muscles is useful and um, I recommend it, but for it's a little bit more advanced. So for basics, we're gonna stick with this. And then I would recommend going from here and studying more of that stuff and getting more in depth. But this is another image from that same book. And if we could break this down, you can see here that all of these main groups are broken up into major masses or volumes. So we have the head, the neck, the shoulder, the upper arm, and this is including just the bone and the muscle in general as a solid mass. What is this basically roughly, you know, what main masses are we thinking about when we're drawing and taking into account? So we have the head, the neck, shoulder, the upper arm, the chest, the lumbar, which is this part right here on the back, the pelvis, tail, abdomen, down under here, then uh, the thigh, the lower leg, the hind foot, and the toes, and on the front we have the upper arm, the, the forearm, the forefoot, and the toes. Okay, now we wanna be thinking about this in three-dimensional, so, so let's look at this again. This is where, we, where we're starting when we're looking at a real animal, but what we're breaking it down to, just to reiterate, is these simple shapes where all we have to worry about is the head, okay, the neck, shoulder blade, basically the from the shoulder to the elbow, forearm, wrist, and toes, okay? And then the chest, the lumbar, the hips, okay, and then we got the thigh, shins, from the ankle to the ball, and then the toes as well, same thing. Okay, and then the tail, of course. That's all that we need. Out of all of this anatomy and stuff that we're looking at here, that other stuff is good to learn and it can give you more and more informed. But as far as the basics go, just starting out, like if you're sketching or drawing, these are the main points you wanna be hitting, okay? And um, let's go ahead and take this now to a three-dimensional sort of volume, okay? So here, this is, um, let me turn that up. This is a um, this is another image from the book by Elliot Goldfinger, and when I was learning how to draw animals and studying animal anatomy, this was really helpful for me to understand the basic forms. Now, this isn't any specific animal. This is just a sort of generalized quadruped sort of mammal of some sort. So it's not a horse or a dog or anything specific. It's just like a rough generalization of what a quadrupedic animal looks like, okay? And these are the main forms, but in a more three-dimensional form. So you can see we still have the head, the neck, shoulders, right? Um, the upper arm mass, forearm, okay? We still got all of this stuff here, and it's just in a more three-dimensional form. And when you're drawing something, you wanna be thinking about all of these forms. How big are they in relation to each other? You know, what angle do they come out of the body at? How does this relate? And taking all this into account when you're drawing your image, okay? And let's look at it from, uh, let me just get rid of this stuff here. Let's look at it from a different angle. You can see here from the top, we have the top view. You can see kind of how these masses are. You still have your shoulder blades right here. Let's uh, get back up so we can draw. So we have the shoulder blades right here that we were talking about before. That's the same as these muscles. Or I guess they're not muscles necessarily, just that form, right? Okay, then we have and you know what, I'm gonna do this in different colors as well so you, we can see a little bit more clearly. Let's start with the head then. So head, right, that's the same on all of them. Then we have the neck. So this part here. Like I said, this is gonna be the same on basically any mammal quadrupedic creature you draw. It's gonna be different for if you're working on um, something else like a bird or a uh, like a reptile but you can barely see it over here we'll suggest it there but this is for quadrupedal mammals which quadrupedal if you don't know just means that has four legs then we have uh, 
this, the rib cage region. Okay, then the hip. Well, actually before that, there's the lumbar region, which is this shape here. You'll notice that from different angles, different things are more visible than in others. And you wanna take that into account. Even though you know that it's there, you might ne not necessarily be drawing it uh, visible in every angle. You don't need to force the image to showcase every part if you can't see it. Like for example, from the top view, you're not really gonna be able to see the forearms or the toes or things like that. That's totally fine. Or the abdomen, for example. Um, that's okay. And we're gonna add the tail in the lumbar region here. I know it's a separate, it's a separate thing, but we're just gonna use the same color. Um, then we have the thigh. And once again, you can't really see it over here on this one. Okay. And we, let's do the, uh, the abdomen, which it's hard to see on most of them. There it is right there. You can maybe kind of see it here. And you can't really see it at all on this one on the left. And then you've got uh, you've got the forearms. We can, I'm just going to use the same color for the forearms and the same rel relative bone back here. And then these all the way down. I'm just doing this so you can see where they all relate to each other in the different angles that they're at and then the toes. Okay, so um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, we can, now that we can see these, right, we can see this 3D form. What I've done is taken this example and drawn what that would look like if we had put skin and flesh over it. So once again, this isn't a specific animal. I'm certain there's gonna be at least one person in the comments who's like that's not what a dog looks like or that someone's gonna be like that horse looks weird um it's not a dog it's not a horse it's just a general general generic animal it's the walmart of animals okay um the off brand so to speak so um you can see here i'm gonna go back and forth between i'll bring this up here so you can see this image So you can see that we have all these forms, but once we have skin overlapping on top of it, it can be hard initially to see them, but you want to recognize that they're still there, especially when you're doing your lighting and shading. So if we look at this, I'm going to make a new layer here so I can point some stuff out. We've got the head, right? We have that mass, we have the neck mass, here's where the shoulder would be, here's the forearm or sorry, the upper arm, forearm, okay, wrist, and then toes, okay, then uh, the chest. Now the abdomen is kind of being covered a little bit here by the leg, the skin here, that's one of the things I was talking about is that skin comes up, and uh, then we have this lumbar region, the hips, Okay, thigh, lower leg, and the rest of it, and then here we go, we got the tail. Okay, so you can see, we still have everything there, even though we've added flesh now, but some of it does start to get masked. You wanna take that into account. The best way to deal with this is to look at a lot of reference photos, and another exercise I would recommend would be taking a picture of an animal, finding one online, and then practice by drawing over it and trying to outline the forms like we did here. Find a photograph, see if you can outline each form on that animal where it's visible, and then also, I'd recommend doing the same thing but drawing the wireframe for it where you're basically drawing the just the major masses and the all the joints so like that just doing the sort of stick stuff here and then doing only the big parts try doing that for a variety of animals 
and you'll slowly start to get the hang of where different parts on the anatomy lie underneath the skin, okay? So, um, let's keep going here. We're gonna, we got some more stuff to cover. So, let's say we're doing a horse. Um, I, wanna, I wanna go over how we kind of go from, give some more examples of going from this place where we're focused on the big forms to something more like this, okay? So once again, you can see here, we've got pretty much all of those same things. Um, this one doesn't have the abdomen in it because I kind of focus on more of a skeletal uh, construction. So we have the head, the neck, whoops, the torso, the hips, the lumbar region, and then you know all the legs and stuff like that. And if you can take a picture of an animal and break it down like this before you draw it, even at least in your head, but I would recommend practicing actually doing this with a drawing, then it's going to make it way, way, way easier uh, to figure things out. And then not only that, but in the future have sort of memorized this reference or shorthand, so to speak, and be able to draw it yourself. So you can see here, we got all those same regions, but this doesn't quite look like a horse, right? Some of these joints might be thinking like, well, I don't see all of that when I look at a horse. So I'm gonna bring this way down so it's not super distracting. And then we can draw over and work with it here. Okay, so here's what we got. We have, um, you can see the head up here, right? The neck. Um, this, this form right here kind of disappears a little bit. It's still there, but we don't have to outline it so sharply, right? It's masked by muscle and different things like that. And depending on the angle, it's gonna be more or less prominent, okay? So got our shoulder mass. We've got, um, you can see here that this is kind of the point of the shoulder, drops back here to the elbow, but you still got a, quite a bit of mass here for the horse, for, the, for his upper arm, okay? Then we go from this joint to this joint, so on and so forth, and with horses especially, their, their joints kind of ball up a little bit, they kind of stick out get a little bit skinnier in between those joints, okay? Same thing with the other leg. Then we have this big uh, this rib cage here. This would be, even though we didn't do it in the underdrawing part, this would be like the abdominal spot right here, okay? Then there is the lumbar. You could barely see it right here. His hips, his pelvic mass right there. And then we got the thighs. Now the thighs on a horse are pretty short, right? So it attaches right here, comes to this point right here, but a horse doesn't look like this when you draw its legs, right? It's not like super weird and skinny like that, which is kind of the problem we had. If we go back and look here at this really quick, a problem a lot of people have is because the skin covers it. They're thinking, okay, um, yeah, I've seen a horse before and its joints go like this. And eh, wrong. Or, I've seen a horse before, yeah, and its joints kind of go basically like this, right? Wrong. What they're missing is that there are more joints underneath the skin that, for humans, are a lot more segmented. They're a lot more visibly separated from the torso, but for a lot of quadrupedal animals, they're held a lot more closely. So, instead of just having a joint here and here, there's actually another joint inside the body that goes right there, okay? And then same with here, the elbow is actually right here and it keeps going. There's a forearm and then there's a shoulder blade right here. And already, even though it's still a really bad drawing, it does at least look a little bit more accurate when we acknowledge that there is more stuff there. So let's go back to uh, our other ones. We can look at it again. So turn that really bad horse off. It's a bad horse. All right. So you can see there, like I'm talking about, is a short thigh comes, it's kind of masked by this whole shape here, but the thigh is underneath there, comes down here to the heel, and then we finish it out with the toes and the ankle and everything else. Same with this other side, attaches to the big hip volume there. Okay, comes down, we can finish up at the bottom. I know it might seem complicated, and uh, hopefully this is starting to give you an idea of how things w are working, but just remember this when you're working on it. Focus on these basic shapes. Start with this, figure this out on the animal you want to draw. Once you get this, 
then translate it to this. And then once you get that, see if you can translate it to something more like this to get an idea. And then you can go from there and adding more. So let's actually do an example of that. So here would be the wireframe for a line, okay? We have just the joints and the main masses, really simple, um, drawn out, okay? Then on top of that, I've done the more three-dimensional masses. So if we turn that down underneath, we can see. We can just turn that off altogether, actually. We got the shoulder blades, the upper arm, forearm, the torso, all that stuff, right? The skull, all these different things. And this is what makes up the body for the most part, okay? So what we're gonna do now, oh, we want this off. What we're gonna do now is make a new layer. I'm gonna turn this, whoa, not down that low. We're gonna turn it down pretty low. And we're gonna draw on top of this here on a new layer so that you can see how I would go about adding on flesh on top of this, okay? So we're gonna start with the head here. Um, the head, we've got the, uh, the face. And studying the muscles and stuff is where it's really going to help you to um, start to understand where different landmarks are on the body. Okay, so it might just seem like, oh wow, he's I'm, I could do that. He seems like he's got it down. But I've studied a lot of anatomy and drawn a lot of animals. And it's going to take some practice to, uh, to just get to this point where I'm at. It's not going to be uh, an overnight sort of quick fix sort of thing, but this is a good jumping off point for where you can start. Oops. So I'm not gonna make it the most detailed thing ever, but I do wanna give you an idea. All right. So the neck, I'm gonna come down here. Shoulder blade, the back. Okay, then we have the uh, arm here. Once again, like I said, I really recommend doing quite a bit of study to learn all this stuff so that you're not guessing where different things go. I mean, even still, honestly, there's sometimes where, as far as the muscular landmarks, I am guessing a little bit. I should look at reference for that on occasions where I don't know, but for this, we're just gonna kind of go through it so we're not taking a long time. Okay, come down here, we have the, uh, the back side. Just suggesting some of the uh, sort of muscular landmarks here that we might see. Okay. And then finishing up with the to the toes here, the toys. <laughs> Those are some big feet, let's fix that. I'm obviously not game perfect on a lot of this stuff because we're just trying to do a quick sketch here, but I don't wanna be sitting here forever. But, all right. And then uh, you could suggest some of the back muscles, perhaps just a little bit. The sort of shoulder hunch that uh, big cats have. All right, and then, oh, we forgot the tail. Let's finish up with the tail. Okay, and now we can turn that off. 
you can see you can at this point it's a little bit easier to see without that wireframe underneath you can add a little bit more details and stuff but we're not going to take it too far for this example but you can see that's how I would go about taking it from that to this once again it's going to take a lot of hours of practice of understanding animal anatomy but to reiterate it one more time as long as you can start with those base forms and then add the skin on top of that and go from there um, you'll at least be taking a giant step towards more realistic, more believable anatomy if you are hitting, making sure that whatever sort of quadruped um, million, I mean even this is if you're, even if you're drawing sort of like a, for like a dragon uh, that you want to have this sort of posture more, then just make sure that you're hitting all of these forms and it will be taking a giant step towards that. Now. Obviously, there's going to be huge variations in the proportions of certain things and the um, angles, all this sort of stuff, right? Depending on what animal you're drawing, it's going to be completely different for different things. So keep that in mind, right? They're not all identical and um, you're going to have to use probably a lot of reference. but. If you keep practicing, you keep those things in mind, and slowly but surely, you'll be able to stop drawing horses like this one on the left and start drawing horses like the one on the right. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, let me know in the comments what more type of videos you'd like to see, what sort of tutorials you're looking for, and um, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, leave a like, share this video if you think it would help someone you know. And just to let you know, anyone who does subscribe, I teach really in-depth, uh, 10 plus hour long courses on Udemy, going really deep into either various courses from creature design to digital painting, all these different things. And if you're a subscriber, you can take any of those courses for only $14.99, which is a great deal. Normally they cost in the $100 range because they're, they're really long and have a lot of assignments and stuff like that for you to do. On top of that, there's a 100% money back guarantee, so if you really don't like it, no sweat, it's not gonna offend me. I don't want your money if it wasn't worth it to you you can get a refund. Uh, there's also fully responsive support from me in the Q&A section, and then there's also a closed Facebook group for students only where you can show your work and get feedback and stuff like that. So once again, if you enjoyed, hit a like button for me. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when I post new videos. And for the time being, posting new videos every day. So be sure to join us on Saturday for our live stream at 11 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, or that would be 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I believe. Uh, 10, sorry, not PM, scratch that, not PM, <laughs> 11 AM, 11 AM Mountain Standard Time, 1 PM Mountain Standard Time, that's correct, and then 10 AM Pacific Standard Time. Um, so join us, we're going to be, I'm going to be working on the Christmas dragon I started doing on the last live stream, um, and painting that up. So once again, thanks for all your support guys, and I'll see you in the next one.